Okay, so as I mentioned at the end of the last video, I went ahead and in text 3 and text 4, I made the same changes. I added the placeholder values, each one uh, surrounded by quotes, separated by a comma, and I added the if statement, and you really just have to make sure that you modify this. So if you're in uh, text 4, then it should be fourth choice because you're just grabbing this variable and dropping it down here. Text 3, third choice, should be there. Text 2, second choice, should be there. So you're just matching this variable to this. Okay. Now, I believe in the other video I already added... box colliders, but for some reason they disappeared. So just to make sure that I showed you how to do this, uh, physics 2D, box collider 2D, and set them to triggers. Again, I'm pretty sure this was done in a previous video, but for some reason when I loaded this up this morning, uh, the box colliders were missing. So uh, if they're not there, add a box collider and set it to a trigger. So what we're going to do now is we need to track which answer is the correct answer per question and which answer has been clicked on. So let's do that right here. We're going to create a new list. It's going to be a string. We're going to call it correct answer equals new list string and now you're just selecting which ones are the right one now I'm about to put in numbers and you could rightfully say well wait a second you're saying the string why are you know using numbers we'll get that to that in just a minute so make whichever one be true that you want the first one could be number four uh, second one can be number one Third one could be number two, and maybe number four again. And we said that we had a total of five questions and five answers, and we'll make the last one say three. All right, so why did we do this? Because what we're going to do is we're going to add a, we added a collider box. When you click on that, we're going to capture that and compare it to this. So now, since we're storing this as a string, we can just simply say, does the name of the object match the correct answer? And it's, it either matches or it doesn't. If we use these as integers, we'd have to do a conversion. So next step is, therefore, to create a variable, public static string. Again, that's going to track which one is clicked on. Uh, we'll call this selected answer. So here's where naming convention really kind of helps. This is the correct answer. This is the selected answer. So it kind of makes sense with the naming that you're comparing one to the other. That way when you're de debugging this, you know which one does what. Okay, so. Outside of start, outside of update, and you're going to do this in all four of the text uh, scripts, not the text control, just the numbered text scripts. Void, on, cap capital O, mouse, capital M, down, capital D. This is a predefined routine. It is case sensitive. And what we're going to do is just to make sure it works, debug.log. And we just want the name of what you has been clicked on. So, um... Game object dot name. So what's the name of what I just clicked on? We'll copy this. Paste it here in number two. Save it. Number three. Number four. So this is just making sure the clicking is working. I highly recommend doing this because particularly with complex games when you might have a whole lot of code in here, 
you don't want to start debugging that unnecessarily. You want to make sure that the click is working. In fact, that's how I found out that the um, collider box had disappeared because I was testing this. It wasn't working. I'm like, oh, my box collider disappeared for some reason. All right, so let's run this. And down here, the name should appear of what I click on. That's number one. That's number two. That's number three. That's number four. We're so close now. So we have a question, the corresponding answers, the ability to click on an answer, the ability to capture the answer you've you've clicked on now we just need to compare it so what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the debug log and instead we're going to take that new variable we created so just for consistency we'll go back to text one and what we're going to do is that variable we just created so text control dot selected answer is equal to game object dot name. So as you saw, game object dot name returned the name of what we we're clicking on. So now, rather than just putting it into the debug log, we're going to drop it into that variable. Let's go ahead and do that. Double check, make sure I saved it there. Yes, I did. Okay. So now what's going to happen is we click on the choices and the values get put into a variable. We now just have to compare and then that's it. So question is, where do we want to do it? I suppose we'll do it. Right here in the text control, we're kind of using this a little bit like it's a GM object, a game master object, so we can just keep doing that. So what we're going to do is we're going to create one more static variable to check that we've clicked on an object. So public static string uh, choice selected and it starts off as no what we do is in here text control dot choice selected now it gets set to Y gets set to yes and again we just copy and paste that so what we've done now is we've said okay let's store the value that of the the name of the object we just uh, clicked on and let's set this to yes and then what we're going to do is we're going to make a, a, a few decisions based on that because once you've selected you've made a selection you really don't want someone to be able to make another selection into um, there is some result based on that choice so we can't we kind of want to uh have that overt stop that says okay uh something's been selected now what so in the update section of text control let's do if choice selected equals yes or y and sorry it's got to be a double equal sign I always mess that up so if choice selected is equal to yes then first we want to set choice selected back to no back to n and then we want to do something we want to check if
So if correct answer, and this is a list, So since it's a list, we need to identify which position we're looking at. We want to be the same position as the question. That's the whole point. So that means we need to use the random question variable, just as we used it here to select the question, just as we used it here to display the possible choices. We need to use it here to make sure that we're looking at which one is the correct answer. So that random question variable is really driving uh, the logic of what's being done here. So if correct answer, random question equals equals, and we said that the choice, the, uh, excuse me, the selected answer. So if these match, then that means they got the, the question right. So rather than do anything big and fancy, let's just make sure this is working, and we'll do uh, debug.log correct. And now let's just check. The thing is, I'm not going to remember which one is which, so uh, yeah, first question. What we'll do is um, not going to memorize these. We'll just since it since it will stay in the um, since it will stay in the uh, debug log. What we'll do is we'll just modify this. So uh, we want it to display correct plus a couple spaces plus uh, we want it to display a random question and then just that value that way we can compare it in the um, can compare it to here okay so second question I believe that's actually number one nope something oh there we go now it says correct number one didn't check it the first time for some reason uh, I'll have to check the sensitivity to that. So, okay, it did display a few times. Didn't think it displayed at first. Let's try that again. Second question. So, again, it should be the first one. Okay, it worked. Didn't I click on number four? All right, so when I clicked on number two, it worked. So it was the third question. Correct was number two. So uh, third question, number two. So it's looking like it's working. One of them didn't seem to work though. So this first question, so number four. Yep, it worked. I think the sensitivity that uh, you actually have to click on the letter, I didn't think you did, but let's try that. So this is the third one. We'll click inside the D. Yeah, see, it seems like you have to click on the actual letter. Right, so. When I clicked in the space, it didn't work. When I clicked on the word, it did. So it looks like the collider only really works for the name of the object itself. Uh, there's a few ways we can get around that, but that's really good enough for now. So uh, there you go. So uh, you're clicking on the, uh, you get a question, you click on the object, the corresponding answer that is, and we get a correct response. So what I'll probably do is in between videos, I'll probably just do some more typing as far as um, replace the placeholder questions with actual questions like what's the capital of Germany? And then we'll know for certain that it's working at that point because we'll know what the answer is. All right, that should do it for this video.